one event that happened in Suit 7 to the next question I want to ask. He got married from Suit 7. But this is number one way, ability to hear his voice. I will not trade it for anything, not for money, not for opportunities, not for anything else. If you can hear God speak to you, man, you, you it's very difficult to miss road. Good job. <laughs> I didn't actually want to be a pastor. That was the first thing. I think I, I first knew what I didn't want to be. and we want to welcome everyone connected across the globe wherever you're connected from america africa europe everywhere around the world tonight we welcome you specially to this wonderful meeting tag the bridge and i want to especially appreciate uh, my covenant brothers and for the very first time the three of us are having to be on a platform on a set like this to just talk and address some key issues so it's such a blessing it's such a blessing i appreciate uh, pastor david oedeku jr and my precious Pastor Isaac. <laughs> yes, sir. So, uh, wherever you're connected from, we're going to be discussing some real life issues today affecting the youth in our generation. So, wherever you're connected from, relax, sit back, and uh, let's just get into the discussion of today. But before we, we, we just get right on, I'd like to get a word from both of them. Uh, many people just know Pastor David, Pastor Isaac on the platform teaching the word over the years, preaching and ministering across different parts of the world. But today, uh, I'd like them to just say who is Pastor David and who is Pastor Isaac in their own words. Uh, and I think that would be a good uh, kickoff point for us as we get into the discussion of uh, today. So uh, who do I start with first? Um, okay. Let me appreciate the elder amongst us. Uh, <laughs> let me have Pastor David Jr. Uh, who is Pastor David Oedipo Jr.? All right. Um, David Oedipo Jr. is um, a man called by God, serving in teaching and pastoring God's people, actually just administering the light of God's word and transforming people by it. Not by my own capacity, obviously, but by the help of the Holy Spirit, who is behind all that we do. So I can only say David Oedipo is a man helped by God. Amen. So, <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. So let, let's hear Pastor Isaac also. Yeah, just tell us, who is Pastor <laughs> Isaac Oyedipo? Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Well, Isaac Oyedipo is the person, not the pastor. Okay. Um, so first of all, I, I'd want to say I'm a child of God. I think that's where I want to start before being called of God. First, the child of God. Um, secondly, a youth. Um, I don't see this as a discussion for a generation, but my generation. So um, I'm a youth in every way, um, but also one that strongly believes in the assignment that God has given to me uh, to reclaim a generation and to ensure that this generation ends up seeing the fire of God, Amen. revival in our generation. Amen. And so um, I, I would also say, a learner, um, the one that doesn't learn every day is slowly dying. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I see myself as a keen observer, one that wants to know why things are done the way they are done and to keep improving that way. Uh, I think in a nutshell, that is who you ask me <laughs> who I am. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. Uh, I, I know many people will be wondering and they've been desiring to really understand who are these people behind the platforms, behind the teaching, the preaching of the gospel that we see in the public eye. I think there's something that is kind of uh, universal for all of us. We are just young men who love the Lord, who crave to fulfill his sovereign purpose for our lives and passionate about a generation and how this generation can fulfill God's plan and God's grand design. And I think that's, that's, that's uh, in summary, or in a, trying to just tie all of our assignments and who we are together in a nutshell. Now, I, I discovered, as we get straight into the discussion for, for, for today, um, by the law of creation, 
and procreation. Every new is an offshoot of the old, and that is natural. We see that uh, fine expression in natural creation, natural mm -hmm. procreation. Everything new is an offshoot of the old. But we discover that uh, what we see today is, well, I call it a sharp craving for a disconnect between this generation and the generation of our fathers. There's, a, there's like a gap. There's a gap between them. And it's, it, the, 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 the void is, is getting wider by the day. Uh, uh, and that's part of the things we want to talk about to, 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 tonight. Uh, mm. uh, I would like to throw a question, and I want to begin with Pastor David. Uh, wh what do you think is um, the challenge of this generation that we are faced with today, our generation? What, what do you think is our challenge? Let's begin from that platform. Well, I think that that's sort of like a, is a big question. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that um, my answer will not be holistic. Yeah. But it will probably be just um, a slice of what I think the issues are. Uh, you, as you mentioned earlier, you said that every um, new. new thing is a shit. product of the old. Yeah. Um, that's the law of nature, the law of creation, the law of procreation. Yeah. And I think that um, I believe that sometimes in the bid to go forward, um, some believe that there is a need to disconnect from the past. Mm. Mm. However, you can't go forward without a connection to the past. Yeah. Uh, it has been said that you can only see further by standing on the sure, shoulder sure. of giants. Yeah. Um, I believe that there is a need to come to the point of realization that we need to connect with the graces, with the wisdom, yeah, yeah. with the experience mm -hmm. of those who have gone before us yeah. in order to go further. Mm -hmm. No one ever goes ahead by trying to reinvent the wheel. You find what has been done, and then you begin to how, you know see how to chart your way forward. Uh, so I believe that, you know, in some ways, what uh, should make this generation stand out is simply looking at where we are coming from mm -hmm. and seeing how to go forward instead of trying to disconnect from where we are coming from in a bid to go forward. So I think it's that thin line that you know is part of the problem. Yeah. Like I said, it may not be Holistic. the whole mm -hmm. picture, but it's part. It's definitely part of the issue. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, truthfully, uh, as you said, it's a thin line, very thin line. And I think that's where many of us as young people, because you see many young people today who don't think there's anything the past generation can offer us. So we, we, we believe that we can just create our own path. We can just do our own thing without any recourse to those that have gone ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So um, let, let's, hear you. let's hear from you, Pastor. All right. Um... I think this is a very interesting question. Jeremiah 6, verse 16, uh, stand in the way. Um, ask for the ancient paths and follow therein. I tell people all the time as we hunger and thirst for a revival that a revival is not something new. Mm -hmm. All right, a revival is the discovery of something old yet precious. Mm -hmm. uh, you discover that um, every generation that has seen a revival had to refer to the, the past. Um, I guess part of the challenge that we face, uh, and I'm very personal here, our generation faces, um, may be that we don't understand that, you see, the ancient still has everything new in it. It's ancient, but that path still leads to places we haven't been. You know, so I feel that um, very importantly speaking to my generation, uh, the Asian parts are always going to be important. Yeah. Um, looking back in order to spring forward. So if you want to take, uh, you know, a long jump, what do you do? You go back, right? I think it's a long jump. You go back and then you run. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you run and jump. So uh, very, very importantly, I'm a firm believer, firm believer 
uh, in the ancient parts. In fact, sometimes I, I call it redigging the ancient wells. You know, um, it's very key and very important, particularly if we see God do what he wants to do in our generation. Right. Another thing that I think is very important is there is nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Right. You find out that it's like a circle. Uh, what we are praying to experience, a generation already experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, you also see that we refer to our father as the ancient of days. Yeah. Right. So in the old is the new. Yeah. It's amazing, but it's a mystery. Uh, he said, uh, I walk a walk in your days mm. that even if we had told you, mm. you may not believe. Mm. But then he's still hooked back to the ancient. Mm. Now, I, I want to quickly say this. Genesis 26, I believe, um, you, you see how the Bible talks about Isaac redigging those wells, right, that were covered in the days of his father. Um, so Abraham dug wells. They were covered. Isaac redug and redog and redog and look at this very importantly he found water so there is something new hidden in the ancient paths the ancient routes uh, the ancient wells so i call for this generation to be very intentional and i mean that extremely intentional in ensuring we do not disconnect from the past um, that is not to say that god wouldn't do a new thing no but our connectivity to the past is very essential in experiencing Amen. the new. Amen. You know, um, thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I saw in scripture, you know, scripture is a very complete book. Mm -hmm. There's a portion of scripture that says, remember ye not the former things. Mm -hmm. And there's still the same Isaiah that says, remember mm -hmm. the former things. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it, when, you, when we see our generation striving to create new parts, making so much effort to invent new things, uh, chart new, new courses without any seeming regard for the patterns that our fathers have laid. This is not holistic, but it's a major prevailing thing today. Where do we see the balance? Mm. Because when I read those two scriptures that says, remember not, another says, remember, in the same Isaiah, I said, okay, there must be yeah. a point of balance. So where do we as young people today craving to do something new, to chart new courses, to invent new things, both in the faith and the contemporary life, where, where's that balance point? Uh, where, do we, where, do we, where do we strike that balance? Mm. Let's hear your thoughts. All right. Um, I think uh, it's a very good question you've asked. I, I, I believe that the first thing to realize is that um, one of the, and I think maybe we'll talk about that a, bit, a little bit later, mm -hmm. one of the um, distinctive qualities of uh, the new generation that we find ourselves in is our curiosity, mm -hmm. right? But I think at the same time, the curiosity in some, uh, in some quarters leads to um, for lack of a better word, I would, I would say um, a sense of criticism. Okay. All right. So you find out that there is, to a large degree, an attempt in the desire to move forward to look for what is wrong. Hmm. Right. So yeah. instead of looking for what to gain from those who came before us, we seek to find fault sometimes. Mm. Now, that blinds us to what we can gain. Mm. Mm. And as a result of that, we lose mm. out. Mm. So I, I believe that here is the way to go forward. One is to look for what to gain. Mm. What to gain, absolutely. If we, if we focus on what to gain, mm. right, God adds to us what we require mm. that may not be found oh, as it okay. were yeah. in the past. Yeah. There's always, the, you know, there's always, every new generation is supposed to be an improvement on the past. So there's always going to be something that is added. Yeah. There, is, there is another dimension that is usually added. However, if the focus of the new is to look for a way to criticize the old, then you are blinded in the process 
from seeing what is available in the old to gain. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So I believe that that's the that the first thing is we we ought to we ha, we ought to approach with the viewpoint of what can I gain. Mm. If I can see that, all right, then it seems that my focus becomes right. Are you getting what I'm yeah. saying? My focus yeah. becomes right because I'm looking to see what I can, um, you know, emulate from those who have gone before me, all right? Yeah. And until I'm able to embrace what is available in the examples in front of me, I can go further mm. than where that is. So I, I, I think the balance is, is, in the, is in first coming to the point of recognizing my, my advantage is not in my criticism. Mm -hmm. My advantage is in, is in my ability to look for what I can gain yeah. and embrace. Yeah. I think Pastor Isaac shared a very important scripture, Jeremiah 6, 16, yeah. which says, look for the old path, mm -hmm. all right? And when you find it, you will find rest. Mm -hmm. But he said, there's a statement that follows that. He said, they said we will not. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, rest is gone. Yeah. So the advantage is lost, mm -hmm. right? Because we want to create a new path mm -hmm. instead of following the old path. So I think it's about coming to the talk because we heard others talk. Yeah, yeah. A lot of life is about imitation, mm. right? Which means that a lot of life is the product of what we have seen before. Mm. In the same vein, you know, a lot of our future is going to be in embracing what we have seen in the past. Yeah. So if we look at what to gain, mm. I think it neutralizes mm. a lot of, you know, a, a lot of the um, difficulty that we find in our time and generation, so I, I believe that that's one of the one of the key the, the, the key balance. areas that will help to bring some level of balance. Yeah, that, that, that's very phenomenal. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Now, we, I, I'll let you speak. Uh, we we live today in a very fast-paced world. It's a jet, jet, jet world. The, the 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 pace of this generation is 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 phenomenal. It's like it's it, we're operating a dimension that, truthfully, the generations before us probably never operated at such dimension of speed. Technology is advancing so greatly, knowledge is expanding so greatly, uh, and we discover so much uh, um, qualities being exhibited in the, in the youths of today. And I think uh, because of all of these unique abilities, uh, skills that many young people are now exposed to today, uh, somehow, 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 somewhere, we begin to feel we, we, the, 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 the ways of the fathers are outdated. They are out of touch. Uh, Pastor Polineche was speaking recently and was trying to still draw the heart of the sons back to the fathers. And he was speaking so passionately about this subject. Just today I stumbled on that clip. Uh, someone showed it to me. So how, from looking at it from that perspective, so much is going on with the generation today. So much information, so much technology, so much, so much, so much. Our fathers appear to have followed a pattern that seems, in quote, not as fast-paced as we have today. Where do you think we can also place that balance as young people today? Not to disregard and feel yeah. what they live by is outdated. All, all right. I think before I answer that question, where Pastor David left off was quite important and you know, he talked about ensuring that we look for what to gain. I, I think that subject needs to be further expanded on looking for what to gain. Um, one of the principles of life that I've come to discover is that when you understand your imperfections, it's easy to accept the imperfections of others. Um, you who try to criticize, understand in the first place that you are not perfect. And I think from my introduction, I said one of the things that I do intentionally, not mistakenly, is observe. Mm -hmm. I learned that from one of our fathers 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. I asked him, I said, sir, what do you think the protocol for success in ministry is? And he said, observation. Mm -hmm. Right? And that observation is not just for the person on the other side, but also you understanding your limitations. Let me also quickly say, the one who is young today, will be old tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. It's a circle. 
right? Now we think that our generation is fast paced, but check your children. Mm -hmm. They are faster. Yeah. Right. So I, I just had to bring that out to say, look, it's very important that we understand that uh, criticism, pulling another person down is not the way up, mm -hmm. right? To go up, observe, pick all you can pick. Um, and I'm not making light of that, but it's not wrong to still continue to hunger for more. Mm -hmm. But make sure you are observant, pick all you can pick, because the one who is also observing is not perfect True. in any case. So True. back to your question. Um, I strongly advocate that God is a God of patterns. And if you check all through scriptures, there are certain patterns you find. Yeah. Right, uh, and so no matter how fast-paced the generation is, like my generation, it doesn't erase God's patterns. Mm -hmm. Right, think about it. Some years ago, I I, I just stumbled on thinking about it. Um, God is so much more advanced than people know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right, the first tablet was given away <laughs> on the mountain. So whatever we think we're inventing, who wrote? It was, a, it was a perfect Holy Ghost download on that tablet, yeah. right? You, you, you talk about um, speed. Look at how the Spirit of God caught, was it Philip, uh, moved him. So uh, our generation shouldn't look at herself as so fast-paced beyond our creator. I think that's very important first. We are not, whatever we are saying now, a generation still beats it, yet mm. there has never been a review of the scripture. Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't see our generation as better advantaged. I, I, I'm not sure, M maybe in some light than the previous generation. Um, I just think that we have so much more examples to be able to follow from follow rather, and learn from, right? The advantages I see of our generation is the advantage of the spread of knowledge, which is also a prophetic, um, it's a prophecy, right? In the last days, knowledge shall increase. So right now you can stay somewhere and gain access to books that could be of benefit to you, watch messages that could be of benefit to you. So if you call that an advantage, then yes, it is. But in terms of the God we serve, he has not changed. He will not change. He's a God of patterns. He's a God of ways. He's a God of paths, right? And part of what his patterns would always be is honor, is regard. Yeah. That will not change regardless of the generation. So I, I think bringing balance to this, it will be important for us to note that the creation is not further developed and advanced than the creator. The creator is always ahead, yeah. right? Um, and then I think also bringing balance would see that even though technology may seem to have given us some advantages, we, it, it, it doesn't make us better. It only gives us access to the things. For instance, you can now stay and watch Kenneth Hagin messages before you were born, yeah. Yeah. right? Those advantages that the previous generation may not have gotten, but what have we done with the advantages that we have? Right. I don't know if that answers the question in a bit, but for me, that will be the balance that, look, we are not better. We are not, yes, we celebrate technology, but let's also not ensure that technology becomes a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Right, so balance. And I think balance is just key. God's patterns, God's ways, God's paths. For instance, you will never access power, right, and grow in the anointing without prayer. It, it will not happen. Fasting will never be outdated. The word study will never be outdated. Those things are still constants in working with God. Yeah. Right? So th that, that would be my, my view. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Malachi chapter 4, uh, from verse 5 to 6, prophetically, the word begins to say, in this great and terrible day, the Lord will be restoring the hearts of the fathers to their children. And also the children also to their fathers. So I believe we're in those days where God is closing the gap, bridging the, 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 the void that, has, that, is, that the devil is trying to establish and disconnect these generations coming from the patterns 
of the fathers. Now, now that brings me to, to we, we've talked about the strength that we have in our time as young people with, with the pace of civilization, with the, with the drive on social media, all of these things that are now at our fingertips. These are disadvantages in, in, in my perspective. Now, mm. how do you think as young people we can leverage on this face on all of these all of these things available to us in maximizing the potential that God has placed on our inside and make living life to the fullest how can we leverage on all of these things available to us in our time yet yeah. without disconnecting from the patterns that our fathers have laid um, I think that's a that's a powerful question <laughs> um, like I think like Pastor Isaac said, one of the things that is important is that patterns don't change. They don't change. Right? Right. Patterns are repetitive. Mm-hmm. The pace of the pattern may seem to change in some cases. Yeah. But certain things are always going to be there. Mm-hmm. I think what we do have is um, maybe more opportunities. Okay. So I believe that here, th- there has to be a cross-section between opportunity and purpose. Mm. We have to be very conscious of purpose. All right, the Bible says that before I formed thee, I knew thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet. So why am I here? What's my purpose? What's my assignment? We have to come to the point where life is about assignment, not enjoyment per se. Mm. All right, so if I'm, if I'm assignment-minded in the journey of life and I find a cross-section between what my assignment is and what opportunities are available to me today, that may not have been there. Yes, because opportunities are more like tools yeah. that we utilize in the pursuit of purpose. Yeah. So if I, if I figure out what, why am I here? What's my purpose? Mm. What opportunities are here in the time that I'm on the, on the earth? Yeah. Because God will give you a purpose, but he also causes it to cross, you know, the path of certain opportunities or tools that are going to be instrumental in the execution of that purpose. All right? So if I can find a cross-section between the two, then I'm likely going to be able to maximize my assignment or my purpose. So here is it. I'm here for what purpose? Yeah. What, what am I here to do? Yeah. Why did God put me on the earth? What is available in my time, mm-hmm. right, on the earth mm-hmm. that has a cross-section with the fulfillment of my purpose? Mm-hmm. Right? So, for example, you have today a lot of people on social media doing different things, but there are individuals on social media who recognize what their purpose is. Mm-hmm. And social media drives the fulfillment of that purpose. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So social media becomes a tool okay. for okay. purpose. Mm-hmm. Every generation is going to have certain tools. Yeah. And those tools are the opportunities, as, as it were, for the fulfillment of purpose. Yeah. Um, Moses had his rod. Mm-hmm. It was going to be the tool mm-hmm. for the fulfillment yeah. of his purpose. Elijah had his rod. Yeah. Elisha had his mantle. Every one of them had certain tools. Um, you know, Samuel had his horn of oil. Everyone had the tools for the purpose that they were going to mm. fulfill. Yeah. So what is our tool in our own generation? We have to be able to identify what those tools are, mm. all right, and see how those tools enhance our ability to deliver in our day and age. Um, good example is that somebody sits down somewhere in the corner of the earth today, um, takes a phone in his hand, and is able to do something with that phone that can touch Millions of people mm-hmm. at yeah. the same time. Same time. Yeah. It's a tool. In generations past, for that to happen, there would have been so much that needed to have been invested. So what has that tool done? It has bought for us a greater opportunity, all right, to fulfill whatever purpose God put us on the earth for. So I believe that the leveraging is in tying purpose to the opportunities that our current generation affords us. All right, and if I can tie those two, I'm likely going to be able to maximize mm. the reason yeah. why I'm here on the earth. Yeah. So I think that that would be my, that's, my uh, input. Yeah, that's quite that's quite uh, deep. Uh, that's quite deep. So you can't, uh, you know, you 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 kept emphasizing purpose, 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 and and I and I believe strongly that everyone existing today, um, the crux of our existence is tied to the discovery of our purpose. Mm. And it's, it's, such, it's such an amazing uh, experience for me for us to just sit and just talk about these things that affect our generation. And, and the truth, I know many around the world today want to hear us talk on some of these things as practical as real, um, not just from the standpoint of teaching uh, uh, 
a controlled uh, topic or something. So uh, we want to speak. I, I want to pick on that subject of purpose. purpose yeah. There are so many people today, young people walking the streets. They 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 lack the slightest clue on the reason for which they are existing. Mm. They, they 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 lack the they have the faintest idea on what God's plan is for them. So they are only they are merely existing. They're not living. And I know in the heart of many young people across the nations of the earth is this subject of purpose, this subject yeah. of vision. What is it all about? And how can I really fulfill my purpose for coming to this earth? If you say before I formed in the belly, I knew thee, mm -hmm. and I ordained you a yeah. prophet to the gener to, to your generation, Je Jeremiah 1 5. But how do I find it? I think that's one question many young people want to really get an answer to and i'd like you to just speak for a few moments so. well don't lose me on this one because mm -hmm. if it comes to this subject we can talk three hours That's good. right <laughs> um to everything there is a season yeah. and a time to every purpose under the heaven yeah. so if, if wow if we look at season if we look at time um it's largely connected to purpose. But let me come to your question. Um, after salvation, the next most important thing for anyone to discover is vision. And I say that with every sense of responsibility. We are not born again to survive. No. No. If you look at our fingerprints, till today, it's still being used to differentiate us. Even if you are born as an identical twin, you do not have the same fingerprint. The God that I know is too intentional to make the same of every individual. We are so unique. right? I, I, I'm trying to progress with this. So salvation, vision, and... <sighs> I strongly believe the next after that is ability to hear God's voice. Because then that is one primary way. There are several other ways you can discover purpose. But one primary way is hearing God's voice. We talk about Jeremiah. Yeah. How did he know what his purpose was? He heard God speak to him. Talk about Samuel. Yeah. He heard God speak to him. Talk about Abraham. He heard God speak to him. Talk about Moses. He heard God speak to him. Talk about John. He heard God speak to him. Talk about Jesus. He heard God speak to him. Talk about Paul the Apostle. Wow. He heard God speak to him. Talk about Bishop Oedipo. He heard God speak to him. What have you heard God say to you? Right? Because the world teaches, and there are several other ways, you know, but this is number one way. Ability to hear his voice. I will not trade it for anything, not for money not for opportunities, not for anything else. Yeah. If you can hear God speak to you, man, you, you, it's very difficult to miss road. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to miss. I say this with so much passion because I believe that we have heard so much about God from others, but very few have gotten to know him. Paul the Apostle said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to know him. I want to hear his voice. Because hear me, there are people with very good intentions that could mislead you. They don't intend to mislead you, but they don't know tomorrow. Only God knows your tomorrow and knows my tomorrow. Who better to find purpose than the one who said, before I formed you, I knew you. Right? So you are a finished product that was finished, done, and then channeled, dispatched, right? Dispatched to your generation through the womb of your mother, right? Now, having said that, hearing God's voice is very key, very practical. And we, can, we can go all day talking about how to hear him, you know, but then some other ways you can also discover purpose would be finding out the things that trouble you. The things that trouble me, you'll be surprised that they don't bother you. The things that bother you most probably doesn't bother me. 
right? The things that you are so concerned about as challenges may be a pointer to what you have been called to solve, what you've been called to do, what you've been created for. And then there are several other ways, but I, I, I think we need to go back to the basics of how do I hear God speak to me? You, you can't separate that from purpose. Because there are also things that you never want to do that God has assigned for you. Right? There are things you never think you are capable of doing that is your assignment. And really until you start, you never discover that the capacity was there. Let me give you an example. So you drove a car today uh, to the interview here and, and this talk we're having. If you check the speedometer, it probably can go, what, 260? Right? 240 there about. Have you driven at 240 before? <laughs> but the capacity is there. Right? So we all have the capacity, right, to hear him, yeah. but not everyone has developed the elasticity of hearing him. Capacity is one thing. Elasticity is another thing. There, there is what you and I are so loaded with that we have no idea yeah. True. True. until we are shown. That's why I go back to the primary way of discovering purpose. I remember what it took me, how long it took me. Um, if you ask those questions in the, in the future, we can discuss that, you know. But it, it took an intentional discovery. It said, call on to me and I will answer you and show you. So you can ask God, Lord, what is my purpose? What on earth am I here on earth for? Yeah. Right? And once you discover that, you, it becomes so difficult to be distracted. Now, let me also say something that you didn't ask, but I don't know if we'll have the opportunity to say it going forward. It's also important to know that purposes are in phases. Right? They're in seasons. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And if you go back and look at our fathers, you discover that these things are unveiled in seasons. For instance, God told Abraham, he said, live where you are to a land that I will show you. So the first thing is take a step. And then as you take a step, I will unveil the next. And then unveil the next. And then unveil the next. So God is so, so wise that he doesn't give us all the details at once. Because if all the details are given at once, <laughs> the fear of even taking a step um, comes in. So I think it's also important to say, look, hearing God's voice is important in discovering vision. Um, it's important in following direction. Because there are some people that have authentic and real visions, but the directions, the steps are wrong. Mm -hmm. The vision is authentic. Never look at anybody and say, oh no, God probably never spoke to him or he didn't discover his purpose. That may not be the case, but the steps may have been wrong. The timing may have been wrong, right? Because purpose, season, time all has to work together. And then you now discover that some people have overstayed in a phase without knowing because the last they heard is the last they heard. Yet a new phase has unveiled, they have no idea. So again, I think it's very important to call a generation back to say, look, it's important for us to be able to discover his voice. The voice of the Lord is powerful. It can break anything. It can give direction to any situation. Let's go back to learning how to hear from him and not learning how to hear from others that tell us about him. Our fathers have learned to hear him, right? It's important for us to be able to say, God said to me. It's very important. Yeah, that, that, this, this concluding phrase, I think, is one phrase very few believers or even Christians can hardly say, God said to me. And when we look at the whole of this, uh, all of the statements you shared, it, it just points to the sovereignty of God. Mm the sovereignty, the almightiness of God in creating every one of us as unique entities with unique assignments on the earth. And the truth is our fulfillment in life ultimately lies in the discovery and the pursuit yeah. of that which God has called us as individuals to do. Mm. And I think that's why that subject is so crucial. I, I, I know many persons... Uh, will be desiring to, to hear us even speak a little bit on how did we find our own purposes and our visions for life. I remember back in the day at Covenant University, uh, 
one of those days towards the graduation time, uh, I think that should be 2006 or so, um, I, I, I had to literally lock myself up for, I think, about two or three days in my room there. And I was craving. I told the people around me, don't look for me. It was a holiday time. I'm not going to come out. Just leave me there. I was craving to understand this life that I've come to live is beyond just acquiring the certificate as a graduate of a university. But what will give me the ultimate fulfillment is to understand the reason for which I was created. What is my own part in this generation? What's my contribution by God's sovereign design? And, and with that dedicated time, uh, the Lord now unveiled it. And interestingly, when I look at the journey over the years to your date, everything somehow face by face still points towards that face ultimate picture. Face, yeah. And it's been unveiled face by face, chapter by chapter. Mm -hmm. I, I like uh, Pastor David, um, we've been friends and uh, brothers for many years now. I think close to uh, uh, 16, <laughs> many, many yeah. <laughs> close to 16. I remember we, we used to have a fellowship those days when we were all uh, brothers and uh, no one was married. Uh, no one was a pastor then. And uh, we used to see it on weekends to talk about vision. Yeah. Vision and where God was taking us. And sincerely, looking back to some of those days, sometimes I just laugh, but those little, little days, those little, little discussions, we used to see just as casual, just mm -hmm. in, I think, in a youth chapel or something, we meet then and just discuss. And we're, and we're trying to share what is God calling everyone to do? Mm -hmm. Have you found it out? And it's interesting to just see that years after, everyone is beginning to find their right footing in where God has called them to be. And I'd like you to share your own experience. I, I know many people, both within the commission and in the Christian body and even outside, they, they look up to you as uh, another leader in this generation that has found his own unique assignment. Uh, I'd like you to just share, how was that experience? How did you find it out, yeah. your purpose and your vision? All right, so I think my experience was a little bit in, interesting in that um, uh, I think you know as, as a young as a young chap, <laughs> I didn't actually want to be a pastor. <laughs> that was the first thing. I think I, I first knew what I didn't want to be <laughs> before I discovered what I was going to be, <laughs> and because I didn't know what I mean, because I knew what I didn't want to be, I started to sort of chat my own course and mm -hmm. figure out what I wanted to do. Um, the problem with that was that um, I, I started having too many things mm -hmm. that I wanted to do. So at a point, I mean, I'd always, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd always had this half-hearted prayer, you know, Lord, show me my purpose as long as, you know, in my mind, as long as it's not like this, <laughs> right? So I've always had that half-hearted prayer. But I, I remember that this was in the year 2005. Can't forget it, October 17th to 18th. I finally got to the point where I knew I had to find why I was here or else I was going to waste my life. I, I, I mean, I was doing my master's at the time and I just had come to the point of concluding that it is clear that a life without purpose is a life wasted, no matter how comfortable or enjoyable it may be. I had come to that point it was a crossroad. So I decided that day I was going to find a place and I was going to pray. And I was going to be there until I heard what God had put me on the earth for. So I went to find a little um, motel and I stayed there. This was in the US. On the 17th, I checked in. And I stayed there praying, searching, praying, searching. I would study I would pray, I would worship, I would study, I would pray, I would worship. And I continued that way all through the 17th. I didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. But on the 18th in the morning, I heard the audible voice. That's the first time I would hear God speaking like a physical yeah. person into my ears and gave me exactly what my assignment was. I jumped up picked up my Bible and he gave me certain fundamental scriptures because one of the things that you want to also do when you hear from God is that it must be backed by the word. So he gave me certain fundamental scriptures 
that became the foundation for my life. Now, the truth is this. I believe that with every man's purpose comes certain divine abilities. All right? Now, the truth is this. At the time, I, there were many things I lacked in terms of the ability to be an effective minister as far as I was concerned. I thought my personality, I was, you know, extremely quiet. My tonality seems low. I was always good by myself, <laughs> right? So I thought, okay, there are things that I didn't seem suited for. But as soon as I found it, there was a passion and a fire to pursue that purpose, no matter what it took. I didn't care, you know, what I didn't have. And I found out that as I began to run, he began to open up certain things inside me that I didn't know was ever there. I tell people, for example, the first day I had utterance in my life, I've been ministering for a while, I can't forget it. I can remember where I was standing when suddenly utterance came for the first time, right? I didn't know I had that at all. But God begins to show you that, look, if I call you to the purpose, no man sends a soldier at his own expense. He will give him all the equipment that is required, right? So if he calls you for a purpose, the tools for you to fulfill that yeah, purpose are always going to be there. Yeah. All right? So every tool, you know, that is required is made available. Yeah. Uh, so for me, that was my experience. So I can't forget it. October 17th, 18th, 2005, you know, that was where the door of purpose opened up to me. And that's what I've been running with. And God has been opening, you know, the veil level by level. The journey is still long, but God has brought us quite some way. Praise God. Uh, there's something very significant I've, I've discovered in our quest to discover purpose and understand our vision. Uh, I think it's Proverbs 18 and verse 1 that says, True desire a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermingled with all wisdom. Uh, that, that there's, there's this seriousness in the subject of vision and purpose that must begin to well up in the heart of such an individual that we prompt such a person to isolate or separate himself that this is my, my adventure in life is too critical. I can't afford to waste it. Yeah. I think that's a point many people don't get to. A, a, a desperation, a seriousness tied to this subject of purpose that if I miss this thing, I've wasted my, my existence. And, and once that point comes, I, I just sense a natural sequence to isolate oneself. Because as you began to talk about staying in the motel, I had to lock myself in the hostel. Where you prayed, uh, worshipped, uh, I, pray, I studied, I studied, I prayed, I slept, I, I woke up. <laughs> and, and, but when I woke up from sleep, I said, Lord, where am I? I I'm still looking for this thing. <laughs> And thank God, the third day it came. And the truth is, when it comes, you know. Absolutely. There's this confidence, there's this, like something just pops open inside you that yeah. you, you, you don't need confirmation, you don't need affirmation when it's genuinely from God. Yeah. So I, I, when I hear people say, oh, God spoke to me, I'm trying to, uh, what do you think? What's the Lord saying to you concerning my, uh, no, he's saying nothing. <laughs> he doesn't say nothing. You, you go settle before God so yeah. you can. So I, I, I like Pastor Isaac to also share your own experience in how you found this purpose of yours or your vision for life. I think many want to hear that. All right. So um, mine is a bit of a different experience in many, many ways. Okay. Um, I wasn't looking for one when I found one. Um, it was my sophomore year in Oral Roberts University, and that's why I have such a strong tie to that school. Um, that prestigious university. I just finished classes uh, for the day. I think it was an afternoon period where I had some time and went to the hostel and slept and I saw what you would consider as a vision. I saw myself back in Nigeria. Now I was in the US. I saw myself back in Nigeria 
saw myself, I think, around the Anopaja area and um, saw myself on what we call an Okada, right? The vision opened up and I saw a very young chap. I wouldn't give the details of that. I've never shared that publicly as it were. But then that's when I got a clue of what God's plan was for my life. Now, without me having so much detail, surprisingly, I wrote it down, kept it in my wallet. Then came 2006 when I began to cry for God's plan and purpose for my life. And then he said, I've already told you what it is. And so he took me back to what my purpose was already unveiled four years prior. Now, it's, it's amazing that sometimes God may have shown you his assignment for your life and you didn't know that is what it was or is. I had no interpretation for it at the time, but the Lord moved me to write it down. I still had that paper. I scribbled this vision on four years prior in 2006. So when I was asking him, Lord, I want to know what your plan and purpose is for my life. He said, go back. I've told you before. And I was wondering, you told me when, how, <laughs> how did it happen? When did it happen? Now this is where God's plan and purpose for my life for my generation came in, right? I had no idea. Now I want to also say that you may not understand all the details of the vision initially, yeah. But now in the phase that I find myself, I still find myself referring back to the original vision. Surprisingly, when I came back about a year ago, I still have the document I typed out. This is as far back as 2007. In the original form, typed, sealed, I still had a look at it and I saw God unveiling that. I told you this, 2006, it's compared to what I showed you 2003, so three years prior, sorry, not four years prior. Uh, and then now with what I'm telling you today, you still find it hidden in the same document. So mine was a bit of um, looking back to what he already showed me because at the time I wasn't asking for vision, but I found myself at the point in that vision where I was, if I remember correctly, sobbing. I saw the state of my generation in a little boy, had no idea, had no understanding of it. And then I woke up with so much, so much concern, so much deep rooted concern for what I saw in this vision that I was moved to write it down, kept it in my wallet. I changed wallet several times. I kept moving the paper from wallet to wallet to wallet. 2006, asking and crying to God, what is your plan for my life? He said, go back. I've shown it to you before. And then from there, he began to unveil scripture. Uh, my brother stated that it's very important to ensure that there is scriptural background. Now, at the initial vision, I didn't know it was a vision. I just wrote it down. So there was no scripture. But now scripture upon scripture upon scripture showing me exactly what his plan for the first phase, as I knew it then, would be. Um, and then uh, I've seen that with faith coming here and there, new phases, sorry, coming here and there, there's also scriptural backups, but it doesn't deviate from the original vision, right? Uh, so for me, that was my experience. Um, I didn't have to lock myself down. Uh, I didn't do that. It came to me without looking for it. But when it came to proving the vision, all right, I remember spending, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, not less than six months. Again, I didn't want to do it. Right? So day after day, I found myself opening the Bible and saying, Lord, speak to me, confirming that this is your plan for my life. The one who suit seven then. The one, the two, uh, first month, second month, third month. And I documented all of those things down. Still have the documents still today where the scriptures were stated. And then it got to the point where I said, okay, I surrender. I agree. Right In life, it's very dangerous to take a step comparing yourself to another. He that compared himself to another is not wise. I tell you, you mentioned something that really struck me. If you are fulfilled in what you are doing, you should be the one to know. If you are not fulfilled, you also know. Life will be so frustrating getting commendation from man but lacking fulfillment in your heart. 
there is just a way that you know I am doing what I'm supposed to do. And like Pastor David said, it comes with divine abilities. God will not give you an ability that doesn't match your vision. Right? So that, that's an experience for me. It goes back again uh, to be able to hear God's voice. But the truth is, if you are really uh, passionate about discovering what his plan for your life is, he will show you. Yeah. I didn't just say he will speak to you. He will show you. God is a God that speaks. God is a God that shows. Yeah. And so we must be sensitive to be able to pick what these signals are part time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, it's been a very interesting discourse time for, for us. And you mentioned something about Suit 7. Yeah. Many of you will not know what Suit 7 is, but uh, I think we know what Suit 7 is. <laughs> it's a wonderful apartment. You own the apartment. Yeah, yeah. it was Pastor David's apartment. Yeah. We're all uh, tenants. Tenants. Uh, <laughs> tenants that never paid rent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was even in school then. Till I, were you still there after we left? No, no, no. no, no. But we're still students, so but we used to go to Suit 7 to, to just relax and feel like graduates. <laughs> um, and a lot of things happen in Suit 7. Suit 7. We'll tell you the story of Suit 7 another day. <laughs> but one of the major things, and I'm going to tie one event that happened in Suit 7 to the next question I want to ask. He got married from Suit 7. In fact, I remember <laughs> your wedding day. Some uh, events. Some events <laughs> happened. <laughs> uh, maybe I should say this or not. Well, it's, it's, it's many years past. We can see it. <laughs> the testimony now. <laughs> we literally forgot the wedding ring. And uh, the time was getting close for the exchange of the ring. And the men on the train were literally <laughs> almost sweating. <laughs> uh, you know, when you are speaking with your eyes, ring, you ask the person, who is with it? Are you with it? Are you with it? No. Where is it? We left it in the suit seven. Suit seven again. Who can go to suit seven and get back within the next few minutes? And, but those were all amazing times. Now, yeah. uh, so seven was where uh, he married out of. Now, in the journey of vision and purpose, thank God for our call in our assignments. Thank God for our call into ministry. One other very critical aspect that if a man or a woman misses this, yeah. that person can live a life of frustration. And I know many young people today uh, have those or are, are faced with that question in their heart. What is the place? And I'm posing this question to Pastor David and Pastor Isaac will tell us his own testimony on how he found his wife. But I'd like you to just share with us and <laughs> what is the place of discovering your God ordained spouse? And what are the signs that will give you that conviction that this is the right person? Because if you get the wrong person on your boat, that can be very devastating. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I, I think that maybe I would first answer the question in terms of what's the place and yes. then maybe how you... Mm -hmm. I think the place of, of your God or the spouse is, like, is, is, is non-negotiable in the journey of purpose. Yeah. All right. If you are going to fulfill God's plan, you have to actually find God's person yeah. for that journey. Because, like you mentioned, where that is not the case, there will be a lot of frustration. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of tension. And it has the capacity to abort the fulfillment of purpose. Mm -hmm. So that is, is, is a vital key. You can't negotiate that aspect of one's journey. Now, the question then is, how do you find who it is? How can you tell? And I think that also goes back to the place of what Pastor Isaac was talking about, which is you have to be able to hear from God. Mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot negotiate that aspect. Like you need to hear from God concerning God's purpose. You need to hear from God concerning God's person. Mm -hmm. The reason is that there are many that will look like it, but are not it. Samuel said, look at Eliam. He looks like it. Behold, the Lord's anointed. God said, no, mm -hmm. I have rejected him. So there are times that you have people that fit whatever it is that we have as the ideal stat stature or the image of what we think yeah. is going to be required for that journey. So it's not like a checklist has A, correct, has B, correct, has C, correct, must be the one. No, you have to be able to come to the point where you can hear. 
is this who God has for me yeah. or not? I think that is extremely vital. Now, that does not mean that when that is done, there is no work to be done. Yeah. However, the first thing is that you have to clear that. You understand, you have to clear that. So for me, in my own personal experience, I, you know, I said I found pop, I found what God called me to do in 2005. I met my wife much earlier than that. But the moment I discovered this is what I am here for, okay, my first thing was, look, it would be wickedness for me to take you on a journey you are not supposed to go. So the first thing is, look, I'm going to go and spend time with God and find out, is this journey for the two of us? You find out also for yourself, because you have to know. Yeah. Each person has to be sure. They need to know. Yeah. And that is where the, the, the capacity of everyone who is a child of God to hear from God yes. comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So at that point, having now heard this is the, you know, this is who I want you to be with. This is your partner in the journey of life, and vice versa. There shouldn't be any pressure one from one person to the other. Everybody needs to hear. Yes. You know, and once that is cleared, it now becomes, okay, what does this journey take? What will this journey require? And that's where a lot of discussion, you know, it bothers me quite a bit when I see two people who claim that, oh, yes, this is who I'm going on this journey with, as far as purpose is concerned, as far as God's plan is concerned, and they, the last thing they discuss is what the purpose is. To me, that's actually, it's like you're planning to fail. It, it, what the purpose is, is important, but how we are going to get there is, I would say, even more vitally important. So there is the need to begin to have, you know, very rich discussions about, you know, this is what God is showing me. How are we going to get there? What, what you know, what is he showing you as well? You understand? Yeah. Because everyone is created by God. What is, what's the meeting point? How are we going to end up at the place of fulfillment on this journey together? I think those are vital discussions that you have on that journey, all right? And then having found what those things are, then who must I be? In other words, what are the things I need to begin to work on myself, you know, to, in order to fit that picture? Yeah. Because there are things we need to shave off. Yeah. There are things we need to add on, all right? There, there's a lot that needs to be, we are, we are a product in process. Absolutely. And I think that discussion helps to sharpen, you know, one another in terms of getting towards what that ultimate picture is. And it's an adventure that you keep going through as it were in the journey. But I believe that that's one of the vital things. So you have to be able to first hear from God. All right. Each person needs to hear from God. No one depends on the other one's hearing. Yeah. And secondly, I haven't done that. We need to now begin to really express the details of what the vision is and how, you know, to get there, as it were. And then thirdly, in my view, will be what, you know, I need to become. What do I need to shave off? What do I need to add on in order to be able to fulfill what God has called me to do and what he has called you to do? And like I said, what's the intersection of those two assignments as it concerns both of you? So I, I believe th those are the things that I feel are, are important. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, uh, we will hear um, uh, <laughs> Pastor Isaac. He is going to tell us his story, uh, more like a story of uh, how he uh, summarized story of how he met his wife. And he'll be married now for 14 or 13. Check the clock. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be 13, years, 13, 13, yeah, because December, yours yeah. was three, three years, uh, two years plus before ours. All right. I know how I met my wife. Okay. Uh, we'll hear that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's hear you. All right. So how I met my wife. Um, well, I think the first and most important thing maybe that I have heard in this discussion is what, uh, you know, Pastor David mentioned about discovering purpose and then discovering the person. Yeah. For me, my wife is not the first person I dated. Mm -hmm. um, she knows that. We are very public about that. Um, it's also important to note that a person is not right for you doesn't make them evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
they are just not right for you in terms of the discovery of your purpose and what you've been called to do. So let that be out there. It's very important. We don't go about criticizing someone because it didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> you were the reason it didn't work out because you <laughs> discovered what God had called you to do. And um, so I think that's very important. I met my wife without any introduction. I met my wife um, by just God's leading. It was a Sunday service right here in the Faith Tabernacle. I think that was 2008 or 2009. So I'd already come into ministry then. Um, I want to be sure. I think it was 2008. And so um, I was coming into the secretariat, the same old secretariat, no introduction. I didn't know who she was. But then I just happened to be um, a pastor that she asked to see another pastor. And that's how I met my wife. I knew instantly that she was my wife. And it didn't take me time to tell her that um, I want to get married to you. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't hear a dossier, the Lord. Uh, but I was so sure. Um, I tell you the truth in Christ and I lie not. 13 years have been amazing. 13 years have been sweet. Again, it goes back to discovering your purpose, right? Because you need a fit that matches your assignment. Mm -hmm. And so for me, mine was very easy. Um, thankfully, and by God's grace, I, I really don't have to say thank you to anybody for introducing me. <laughs> um, I met her as another church member. Um, I never looked back. But like Pastor David said, one of the first things we discussed was purpose. I was already working in some degree of it then. But for me, that was the most important thing. Um, this is my assignment. This is the phase I'm in. Where do you see yourself within this assignment? Mm. And so I think that when it comes to marriage, uh, sometimes the crash that marriages experience is not necessarily because the other person is evil. Mm. Uh, it may just be the wrong fit. Uh, when you have the right fit, you know, it's like hand in gloves. It fits perfectly. Um, so I think it's, it's also important. But from my story, you find out that I had to take a risk. And some people are not willing to take that risk. Uh, again, it goes back to you the first discovering God's plan and purpose for your life because who could I speak to to ask about? Right? And many people have had those experiences where you had to ask somebody, okay, do you know her? What do you think about her? I had to rely 100% on God. She took me to her parents. There was nobody to say, you know, so on and so forth. And, you know, one of the things that we have enjoyed is just the authenticity, the openness. Because we had to be open anyway. There was nowhere to confirm anything. You know, so for instance, coming on a show like this, talking about her not being the first person is not new. She knows everybody by name. That's how authentic and open we are. It just gives you rest. There is nothing to be bothered about. There's nothing to be concerned about. But I think it's very important and key that first of all, it is purpose. Find God's purpose and then find God's person. And when you do so, life becomes easy, you know. Um, easy in quote. I'm not saying that you don't go through um, the phases and the challenges it takes in moving from one phase of the vision to the other. And I'm not talking of ch challenges in marriage now, but I'm talking about moving from one phase to another. But the fact that you know you are with the right person in transiting these phases, it makes it easier than when you are with the wrong person but with the right purpose. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my story. Awesome, awesome. It, it's been um, a very interesting um, discussion and sharing tonight and just touching on critical topics that uh, we believe they uh, holistically bridge the gap between where we are and where God intends for every one of us as young people. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for sticking with us, for spending the season with us. I, I want to believe that what I've picked lessons, picked instructions, just learned something from all of the things uh, we've shared tonight uh, that we add value to, to our adventure uh, in life. I want to thank you for sticking with us all through. Uh, the Lord honor you. The Lord bless you uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we'll have uh, each person say uh, a word just for a few seconds and then wrap that up then we just answer the questions which just be just point but this like conclude so just make a concluding word a concluding word 
then we'll just talk on the question and then we're done. All right. Um, well, I, I want to thank God for this uh, time and this opportunity that we've had to be here. Um, I want to also say that by no means um, is all we are saying, at least all I'm saying, um, conclusive yeah. as it were. Um, we are all learning and we are all growing. Yeah. And I, I don't pose to be an expert. I'm only sharing from the things that um, God has helped one to both experience and learn so far. So I believe that um, I want to lay that out there so that we all recognize that there is still more to grow into. There is still more to see. There is still so much more to experience. Yeah. And um, I want to leave that with us as well to keep yearning for more, to keep learning, to keep growing. And I believe that by the time we see again on whatever platform, we would have grown again Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Once again, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Steve, for this couch you've given to us <laughs> to, to speak today. Um, I really see this as you know, us sharing our experience. Um, <laughs> if you notice, we, we refer to scripture here and there, but the final authority on everything we are talking about is the word of God, mm -hmm. right? My, I go back to what I hear Kenneth Higgins says a lot. He will say that if I tell you anything that you cannot find in the word, trash it. So if you hear anything that I said that you cannot point to in the scripture, trash it. Uh, all I've done uh, by the privilege you've given to us is to share the experiences that we had. Uh, so for instance, you know, somebody says, well, one person called to God before they discovered, another person discovered without calling to God. Uh, the truth is you don't determine how it happens. Mm -hmm. It's your duty to just, you know, catch it when it happens. Um, so I'm saying this to say that um, we're all learning I'm still learning. All I've done is share my experiences um, with us. But the word of God holds final authority final. on every subject Absolutely. matter discussed. Absolutely. If it is purpose, final authority. If it is marriage, final authority. You are, you are talking about a show that we just had for, you know, not too long. How can you now exhaust any subject matter discussed? But we are saying that the truth is this. Um, if I'm to give a concluding word after saying all I've said is in our walk with God, let's ensure that we remain authentic. Uh, be real with God. There is no point pretending to be who you are not. Uh, let's be real. Let's be open. And that's how we can receive help from him uh, in the journey of life. Thank you very much. Praise God. Mm. Well, on that note, we appreciate everyone that's stayed with us all through this uh, time of interaction and sharing from our different, different parts of the world today. We thank you guys and uh, we love you all and we, we, we are eager to hear the testimonies um, that you'll be sharing. And please feel free to connect with us on all of the platforms that we have uh, on social media. Uh, you'll be blessed by all the content that uh, keeps coming out as God gives us the grace and the privilege to do time and time again. We celebrate and we love you all. The Lord bless you and thank you and thank you and thank you. Amen.